So I set out to see what the people of Bonnie loved and hated about living in Bonnie Lake. Our small suburb didn't have a ton of information out there. I asked others who live in Bonnie Lake what they thought and they had a lot of responses. I did tend to get a few that stood out, so we're gonna look at those. Let's dive right in. Hey guys, I'm Austin Robertson, your favorite real estate broker in the greater Seattle Tacoma area. Let me know what you think about these points in the comment below and keep your eye on them. The comment section does tend to get a little wild in these videos. All right, Bonnie Lake. This is a small community around 20,000 people. It has some of the most stunning views of Mount Rainier and the Cascades. Beauty is abundant with places like Lake Taps and Victor Falls. Housing costs are consistently lower than areas like Seattle. Where Bonnie Lake comes in around 600,000, a home in Seattle is gonna put you around 850,000. Crime is also considerably lower than more populated areas like Tacoma. So, I mean, really what's not to love? Well, number one, and oddly the most consistent reason people said they hated living in Bonnie Lake, their water bill. A large portion of Bonnie Lake's water issue comes from our topography. The area has a great volume of hills and valleys. This requires the infrastructure to keep up with the need. Bonnie Lake has more lift stations than most towns in the area, and each one costs around, if not more than a million dollars. The other main reasoning for the need for hikes stated by the city council was the 2008 recession, which caused a halt in revenue for the city and stunted development. Now, back in 2018, Bonnie Lake was actually one of the cheapest places when it came to getting water. While the national average for your water bill was around $46, in Bonnie Lake, it was actually under 30, but we knew that wasn't gonna last forever. So November 13th of that year, Bonnie Lake City Council passed a tax hike that was needed for infrastructure and would collect around $33 million by the end of 2023. Starting at the beginning of 2019, water rates would climb an additional 8.5% a year and the sewer rates would climb about 8% a year. So by the time 2023 hit, residents would be seeing an increase of around 50% on their water bill and 40% on their sewer. What? This ultimately has not been forgotten by many residents. Ultimately, make your water and sewer bill around $170 by the time hikes and rates were completed. For some perspective, the average water bill in Kansas City is around $117, and in Dallas, Texas, it still sits at under 100, so 170 is pretty damn high. I will tell you, while I can agree the water bills are very high for a really small town, I do feel like Bonnie Lake has some of the best tasted drinking water around. Number two on our list, Bonnie Lake really has no downtown. This one was put out there a lot and I really think it hits the nail on the head. I would love to argue the point, but sadly I actually do agree with the people on this one. Seattle has a large downtown, Puyallup, Tacoma, they both have great downtown areas. Hey, even Sumner, which is a small adjoining town to Bonnie Lake that's made up of like 9,000 people, has the cutest little downtown area. It has some great coffee shops, restaurants, boutiques, and more. Bonnie Lake just has nothing even similar or relatable. Bonnie Lake is filled with basically a ton of strip malls, like a lot of them. In 2001, Bonnie Lake actually laid out a vision for what downtown Bonnie Lake would look like. The community of Bonnie Lake has tried hard to develop a community gathering space where the people who live in town can meet up, they can shop and do everything else in between. Since that time, the city has at least taken steps by the construction of Main Street, building the Justice and Municipal Center, and making a solid number of improvements to 186th and 88th Street. In addition to the city's actions, a number of projects have been developed that further the city's vision for downtown, which include construction of the Sound Transit Park, the Renwood Apartments, Franciscan Medical Center, and Greenwood High Apartments. While these achievements have increased the number of people coming and going to the downtown area, the vision of downtown as a whole, the place where people stop and linger, that has never been achieved. Many people who live in Bonnie Lake 
are often found traveling to areas like Auburn or Puyallup to eat out, shop, consume entertainment, or anything basically just outside of basic shopping that you can get at Target or Walmart. Auburn has a noteworthy outlet mall, which is just a short drive. The outlets in Auburn have really great shops like Nordstrom's Rack, a Nike clearance store, and a whole lot more. It's admittedly a great place to shop, especially if you have little kids. Bonnie Lake does have multiple grocery stores. In fact, they're almost in a row. You can hit like Fred Meyer, Safeway, Costco, and Walmart one after another. These will meet most of your basic needs throughout your week, but if you want the business, and sort of the culture of a downtown area or that shopping that it has, you're gonna have to drive to get it. Number three on our list, well, you've probably heard rumors of something called the Seattle Freeze. Well, let me introduce you to the Bonnie Lake Freeze. That's right. The citizens of Bonnie Lake have even stated that people in Bonnie Lake are not really well receiving to new people, especially into the community, and they're just not a big fan of outsiders. Being just a short drive from Seattle, which coined the term Seattle Freeze, I'm not super surprised to hear this. Now, this isn't something I've experienced personally. Do you guys feel like the people of Bonnie Lake are super receptive to outsiders? Leave a comment below. People moving in have often described residents as being, quote, nice enough, but not particularly friendly. A common spinoff of this in the comments was that people are not very respectful of others' opinions in the community. As someone who's transplanted to the area here, this is what I will tell you. It is kind of hard to make friends, but honestly, it's hard to make friends any place you might move to. We are all busy with lives, careers, hobbies, children, spouses. So meeting new people can be a struggle, especially when you compare it to a community that you've lived in your entire life. As far as being respectful of others' opinions, this is not something that I have personally witnessed. I think Bonnie Lake has a broad range of beliefs and everyone is more than free to live them. I would suggest that if you're looking to relocate or move to Bonnie Lake, just like anywhere else in the country, that you come up with some kind of a game plan on how you're going to meet new people. How are you gonna plug in, meet someone, and have them introduce you to other people? That is an easy route to go. Join groups like Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, or build community through kids sports or church. There are a lot of ways to connect with others. Don't fall into the trap of thinking otherwise. Number four on our list has got to be traffic. Traffic in Bonnie Lake is probably one of the very few things I personally dislike about living in the area. Now you're thinking traffic jams, congestions and all that. Well, I mean, you're, you're not wrong, but let's look at speed. This is something that makes me absolutely lose it. Traffic around Bonnie Lake moves so slow. Have you ever driven on a highway in Miami? You know, where if you don't go 120, you'll get ran over? Well, think the exact opposite of that. People drive so slow here, it is painful. Two sides to this. They are either driving slow, or it could be because there are considerable speed limits on even open streets that cap out around 25 miles an hour everywhere. I remember early on into our move, I said, well, hey, at least it should be a safer place to drive. And God, I missed the mark on that one. As it turns out, the greater Seattle area is actually ranked one of the bottom when it comes to safety compared to other metro areas for driving. The other huge issue I see with traffic is infrastructure and planning. The city was not at all ready for the growth that it's had. Communities like Tahale, which are massive planned communities that just continue to expand and grow at rapid rates, currently find themselves with only one way in and one way out of the neighborhood going into town. And this is where it gets even more insane. At the end of the one way in and the one way out sits the Bonnie Lake High School and Mountain View Middle School. Now these two sit across from each other on that same road. So if you're needing to get out of that massive neighborhood at the start or dismissal of school, you could be in a very, very rude awakening. Highways like 167 also are not set up to handle the traffic flow. If you drive down the 410 early in the morning, it's not really a surprise to see 167 backed up past and blocking multiple exits. From 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. are some of the worst times for this street. 
167 is also undergoing a three-phase expansion plan. 2022 was the start of the second phase and the third and final phase is expected to be completed by 2028. So the 410 is also nothing short of painful. Many people stated that they don't even want to leave the house Friday through Sunday due to the consistent backup congestion and overall frustration they have from this traffic. My suggestion for living in Bonnie Lake is you learn your back roads, ways around the traffic flow and times where traffic is not quite as wild. If you're gonna work in Bonnie Lake, try to secure housing close to work or try to leave plenty early so you get where you need to go. Lastly, and the fifth most common item that came up on my Facebook search was good restaurants. So much so that the community has made a point to let you know that, quote, we have a Denny's now. Personally, I don't mind this as much. There are locations that we love to go to in town, like Glow the Martini Lounge, Trapper Sushi, and obviously Chick-fil-A. But we tend to eat most of our meals at home as a family. When we do go on dates, we actually really enjoy either traveling uh, to Tacoma to eat by the water or to eat at a high-end meal, more so in Seattle. There is something really refreshing about getting out of town on those dates, sitting in a nice restaurant and being away. I think this also plays into the mindset of there being a lack of quality restaurants. When you have Tacoma, Bellevue, Seattle, Redmond and others fairly close, and you compare that to what you're getting in a town of 20,000 people, it can kind of feel like slim pickings. If eating out a lot of something you do, uh, this could be something that might get underneath your skin. Here's the deal. Bonnie Lake is a wonderful community. There are plenty of things people hate about their towns all over the country. It could be the most beautiful town in the world and people are still going to have issues with it. I have made a very happy home in the area. I do get frustrated by the traffic and I do not enjoy paying steep water bills, but I will tell you that my children are in great schools. They are living a great life. They can play outside freely and me free of worry. We have great jobs. Our housing cost is a lot lower than a lot of the other areas, and it is overall a really happy place. If you want to find out, come join us. I will be happy to help you look for your new place here in Bonnie Lake. My information is obviously right down there in the description below. Reach out and we can help you find a place anywhere in the greater Seattle Tacoma region. If you're looking outside of that area, I do have a vast network of rockstar real estate agents that I can connect you with for free. All right, guys, so that about wraps this up. Until next time, I'm Austin Robertson.